for tip off. Tulsa in white and in their green jerseys. We've got South Florida. Got Asia Ellison, Moore Sheridan, Benji Adu head to head with Queen Dexter on the tip. And it's one out by Tulsa and Delaney Crawford. The sophomore goes straight to the rack. A little off balance and it's picked up off the boards. And you already noticed that quick play off the tip. Both teams, they like to play quick. They like to get shots up. So we're going to see a lot of fast-paced, high-tempo offense this game. There's Chineka at the top of the key. You see the starting lineup for South Florida. They haven't mixed things up as of late. And why would they? They're on an eight-game winning streak. And, of course, they've won the first seven in conference. As that one's rejected, though, out of play. Menjianu can't finish on her first attempt. But I'll tell you what, I like the look into Menjiadu. She is such a force inside, and I believe that's where Florida has the advantage. So we're going to look inside to her in the paint this game. Quisa has just have a, has a couple of seconds to shoot. That one in and out. Janaka can't finish, but Quisa gets the offensive rebound and a fresh shot clock. That's heartbreaking for Tulsa. Seems like you, they almost had that shot clock violation. And Yadu goes to work on the block, and she finishes. Absolutely. That's exactly where you got to get it into. And notice here that they have Kalen Levings on Tulsa in the lineup right now to provide that size that Tulsa's going to need to be able to handle them the on the inside. Well, because Tulsa plays pretty much a five out, it means that they basically have all combo guards. So when you have a big down low, sometimes that can lend itself to some mismatches on the USF side. We'll see if the Bulls can take advantage. Yeah, as they do that play, and that's what I love about this team. They can play five out, one in, They, I mean four out, one in. They can play all five players that have just seen there. All players capable of shooting from beyond the arc. Brito, Ariel Wilson, an absolutely pass first point guard as Brito down low, baseline cut, and Chineka hits the shot. She'll head to the free throw line. Chineka, just such a strong guard, so nifty, and that's just a great pass. She also sets herself up very well to score, as you see here, and then gets the drop as well. Talk about her strength going to the basket. Janeka sinks the free throw. Again, we talked about her and all that she's done this year, but she's been even more impressive in conference play. And in this eight-game win streak that USF has going on, she's averaging 19 points per game. Of course, she was a preseason player of the year here in the American Conference as Brito, that one rattles out. Tulsa the other way. Maddie Biddle, a super senior on this roster. Euro step in traffic. She got hacked here, Maddie. Absolutely, Maddie Biddle. We talked about it with Coach. She's one of those unsung heroes on the team, and I would say she's probably one of the more aggressive players on this Tulsa roster. She just attacks the basket. She's the energizer bunny. She just brings that energy that Tulsa needs. She's now played 118 games in a Tulsa uniform. If she makes it to 120 in her career, which she most likely will, if she misses the free throw, then she will crack the top 10 all time. So just that experience. I mean, this roster for Tulsa is actually fairly young. You know, they often start a couple of freshmen, and then Point Dexter is a sophomore, so is Crawford. Quisis. And Giadu working around the perimeter here. Shot clock is winding down for USF. Quisis has to drive on the baseline, dumps it up. Janeka, elbow jumper, in and out, off the rebound. And the second chance no good for Menjiadu. And finally, that third one goes. You can't let USF, a team that has such a high shooting percentage, get that many looks. Absolutely, and the thing that's interesting about this game is that both teams are almost pretty much even. You talk about rebounding, but in different ways. Tulsa is more of a group effort versus with Florida. Benji Adu is just a beast on the glass as we saw that last possession. Patting her stats with three rebounds and the bucket. Airbay, excuse me, Mayberry off the mark on that attempt. Quasis, usually a three-point shooter. We've seen her drive a lot today, and she's pure on that. 
Oh yeah, she's worked on that game tremendously. And talk about, you know, she was a transfer from Florida State where she's primarily shot three-pointers, but we've seen all season long how she's expanded, able to take the ball off the bounce. This for Point Dexter, a run out opportunity. Brito, the layup is good. And that's what USF wants to do. Mara, if you're the cameraman, I'm surprised he doesn't get whiplash from how fast back and forth this game is going when you talk about the pace, the transition. It's very exciting to watch. 11 points before the media timeout for USF. Middle gets blocked by the freshman. And Young was there to help out as well. Excuse me, that's uh, Ariel Wilson. Redshirt Jr. Transfer from Memphis. And a big part of this team for USF. Just defensively does the little things. And again, very unselfish player as Biddle is headed to the free throw line. She's going to shoot three. Wilson commits the foul on the perimeter. Yeah, just not a smart foul. That's, you know, one thing I remember as a player is you don't foul a person on the, on the three-point line. Further out from the basket, the more, you know, unnecessary the foul is. But for Tulsa, they're going to have three shots at the line. Well, Wilson will take a, a seat on the bench next to Fernandez. Good on the first one is Maddie Biddle. Native of Bixby, Oklahoma. Two for two. Now she's stepped it up a notch in conference play. She's averaging 14 points in the last six games for Tulsa. Of course, using that fifth season that most players got because of the, the COVID pandemic. And you see the numbers right now. Not a great start for Tulsa offensively, but those free throws certainly helped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This was a tough start that they had in their loss against Tulane as Menjiadu gets that easy bucket there in the paint. So, you know, for Tulsa, there we go. That's what I was literally just getting ready to say is that they need to see some shots going in. And there goes one with Fiddle. And she brought the energy in that last uh, outing too against Tulane. Uh, now Tulsa has a chance to tighten things up after that air ball from Chineka. Uh, Biddle has seven points for the Golden Hurricane. You see her there with the ball. Point Dexter, Biddle, and that's the thing, and we talked about this with both teams. They're so balanced that anyone can kind of get you on any given night, and so you can't just key in on one player. Too strong on that one. Janeka to the rack off balance, still scores. Diego Sin. And that's going to bring us to our first break here in the first quarter. It's a high scoring affair as we expected. 15 to 9. First, and she did just that, as you can see, padding her stats with all those fours. There's just no answer here for Mengiadu. And this is why, hey, she's the number four scorer in conference, the number one rebounder. Yeah, this is one of the best rebounders in college basketball, period. She is uh, third in the country in total rebounds. Of course, she's adding to that today. You see her right there mid-post with the basketball going to work. It's tough to guard her. Good footwork as well, and she gets the floater to fall. Mara, what do I always say in our broadcast, Mara? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep getting the ball into where it's hot, and that's Menjiadu, but great answer there back there by Tulsa. That was Maya Mayberry with the finish. And we're here at the Reynolds Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is a, a place that has not seen a loss yet for the Tulsa women's basketball team. They are 9-0 and at home. But USF, of course, has the numbers in their favor in this series. The Bulls are 10-0 and against the Golden Hurricane in history. And, of course, uh, Tulsa wants to change that today. Crawford in and out. Quasis looking around. Fencio in the game. 
And that one pure for Menjiadu. And now she's got 10 points. Yeah, listen, they wanted to keep her out of the paint. She said, hey, I can score from outside the paint too. Nine point lead for USF. Middle off out of control as that one's tipped out of play right in front of Fernandez in that Bulls bench. You had the post up here and pushed her off the block, but hey, that doesn't matter. She gives you a little heat check and she's able to knock down that short jumper there from the short corner. Well, she's halfway to double double number 49. She's got 40 in her career. Unbelievable numbers. When Dexter goes to work, swish on the elbow jumper. And that's her sweet spot right there where you said, Mara, at that elbow jumper. There in the short corner, that's her mid-range money. Janeka, beautiful stuff. And this is what makes her such a tough guard. She's able to knock down that three from beyond the arc, but then, you know, you close her out, and she has that speed, that niftiness to just go right by you and finish. Yeah, her numbers are outstanding. 46% from the field, and then she's shooting 40% from three, so you really have to make a decision on how you're going to guard her, and she might burn you either way. Crawford in the paint, past the tree, somehow finishes. Yeah, now Crawford, we talked about how she's a very pass-first point guard. We normally see her with the assist, but hey, you take it to the rack, girl. You got it. Tulsa is responding well, yet they're still down six. Quisis don't want to let her get hot. Middle off the rebound, moving quickly here for the Golden Hurricane. Middle from downtown. Why not? She's got 10 points. Three-point game. Asensio, a little short corner, and that one's good for Daniela Gonzalez. This is a deep team. We're going to see USF use a lot of their bench. Same with Tulsa. Mayberry off the back iron. Absolutely. And again, here come the Bulls. Have, sorry, Mara. What a luxury to have players have that depth where you have players come off the bench and then just give that extra energy, not just on the offensive end, but on defense as well. Quisis can't get the shooter's touch. Point Dexter. Again, you've got to be in great shape for this game. Crawford, skip pass, short on the three is Mayberry. Janeka to the move, and Biddle blocks her. There's a reason why Tulsa is in this game right now, and that is because they're getting buckets from everywhere. Crawford with the hard take to the basket, and how about Biddle with the three? Yeah, again, Maddie Biddle, an experienced player on this roster. Ten points. She's five for seven. Or, excuse me. She's two for two from three-point land. And she's been at the free-throw line a fair amount. She's four for five from the charity stripe. Backdoor pass. Quises can't finish the layup. And off the boards. Tulsa wants to run. Harriman, Biddle, make it 12. Wow. wow, what a tremendous finish there. She just takes it so hard, the basket. I love her energy, and I love that aggression there by Biddle. And I just want to shout out to Tulsa right now. They're doing a great job on pieces, just running her off that three-point line, forcing her to take tough twos. She's able to make those shots, but those are tougher. Well, that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. It's just a three-point lead for USF. And Maddie Bitt, you know until they know how much you care. And I know that Pat Summit cared about beating UConn a lot. So did Jose Fernandez. Of course, he had to deal with UConn for a while here in the AAC. And they had pretty good success.
USF, despite Gino and company being in this conference, as you saw there, 115 wins in the AAC. So he's three away from that uh, conference record that Gino Oriamo set. So feels like he'll get there this season, Jose Fernandez. Yeah, how about that? That's just such an accomplishment to achieve there. I'm talking about Gino Oriamo here. He's going to pass him in wins in the AC, AAC. And Fernandez has... You know, taken an interesting route. He's really gone with international players. They've got eight on this roster over the course of his career with USF. He's recruited players from 18 different countries. He is willing to just get out there, travel, and find the best players around the globe. Yeah, I would love to as well, just to get that vacation out there paid for by the program. But then on a serious note, you got that experience, almost pro-like player um, that you get from those players playing in the FIBA on those national teams. So, you know, you got to credit. That's why Florida is such a great team right now and why they always have been. Crawford at the free throw line. Rattles home that first attempt. Again, players from 18 different countries. Eight on this roster right now. Crawford goes two for two on the charity strike. I think you can see it. You know, there is a, a little bit of a European flavor in the way that USF is playing. And they've got great footwork and all the traditional kind of skill sets. And it is really fun to watch. Yeah, also, I want to point out, too, so they do have eight international players on the roster. But you could also say nine. So Maria Alvarez, she's born in Colombia, even though she's lived in Florida. So Alvarez just entered the game. So you're there with the ball. High post action. We're seeing some of that depth. Quisis trying to get hot. Still nothing. But Gonzalez is able to finish on that right block. Back to a three-point lead for USF. We'll get a foul. Foul underneath. As we see this last Bulls scoring opportunity. Yeah, we know Sammy Puisas can knock down that three, but she misses it. But hey, you can't let him camp out there in the paint. You got to box out, and they didn't do that. So guess what? Gonzalez punished them, demolished them on the boards, and they would get that finish. Wilson back in the game, playing points for South Florida. Alvarez and Gonzalez. Three second violation against the Bulls. Well, I, I think that too much too, at this level. Yeah, I think they took me too literal tomorrow when I said camping out in the paint. <laughs> you can camp out there for a board, but you don't want to camp out there and get that three second violation. Point Dexter. Four points today. Mayberry off the drive. Crawford thought about three. Deep three for Mayberry, and it's clean. And Mara, how many names did you name within that play? They get that ball moving around from player to player. The players are interchangeable, and that's what makes them such a hard guard because you have to know which player is where at all times, and that's why they got the three there from Mayberry. She can shoot it. Let's get another look at it here. I love it. The ball movement here. You have to drive and the kick out here to Money Mayberry. She's able to knock it down. You got to know where she is. Can't let that one off easy. Well, you see the numbers. Three for five from behind the arc today for Tulsa. This is a team, as you mentioned, 17 assists. That's the, they're averaging that per game. That's the highest in the American Conference. And you love to see that from a coaching standpoint. Just unselfish basketball. Chance for Tulsa to take the lead. Mayberry from the foul line. No good. Fighting for the rebound is Crawford. But Gonzalez wins out that time around. Oh, we talked about the numbers here and, and just the fact that the Bulls shoot really well from the field, from three-point land. But defensively, Tulsa does a really good job, especially guarding that perimeter. They're, they're holding teams to, to shooting 25% from behind the arc. I mean, this is exactly what we talked to Coach Melp about, Mara, is how well, you know, they watch film. They buy into what Coach has planned, the blueprint for the game, how to beat 
South Florida, and that is you got to guard your man. you got to know the scouting report on each player. And Tulsa does a great job of that, and that's what they've demonstrated thus far in the game. Now South Florida 0 for 7 from three-point land. No good on that attempt, but there's going to be a foul underneath. It's going to go against USF on the rebound in Gonzalez. And I love that. That's a great effort there by Tulsa. And then, you know, you see Crawford here with the ball because I wanted to mention this on the other end when she got that rebound. She's a point guard and she's averaging, what is it, right around five rebounds a game. I think she's the second or third leading rebounder on the team, which is impressive from a point guard position because she's that person that's primarily getting back in her break. Two minute scoring drought for the Bulls. They turn it over. It'll. Already in double digits, nearly loses it herself, now wants to settle. This would be the first lead for Tulsa of the early evening matchup here between two AAC squads. Dexter can't finish, but she gets hacked. That's a great take there by Poindexter. We talk a lot about her ability to shoot in those different areas, but she can also attack. That's what happens when you're a great shooter. It opens up the lane for you, and that's just a strong attack right there for her. Two shots for Poindexter. Sinks the first one. Again, tomorrow night, UConn, Tennessee on ESPN. College game day tips off from Thompson Bowling Arena at 7 Eastern time. And it's the rivalry that elevated women's basketball to the national stage in the 90s. Number five, UConn takes on Tennessee in Knoxville. That's a great, great game. We got a great one here. Tulsa's up two now. First lead of the night. Again, one and two in conference, and, and for Tulsa, came in hungry after losing to Tulane last week. It was the first loss for them in American play. Brito, the freshman, responds on the bull side. Yeah, and you have to credit Tulane in that game. They just play great for their defense, and they held Tulsa below their average in almost all every single category and coach talked about it which is not a great game when you talk about percentages but that's when you come into a game with a chip on your shoulder but this is how you attack here and you know maddie biddle she's just extremely aggressive you gotta love the aggression and the energy she plays with and i know it's something that fuels this entire tulsa team well, biddle's probably just tired of, of losing the south florida this is a Tulsa team that very much thinks that they can make a run and go deep in the American Conference Tournament, but also they're, they have NCAA dreams and it's definitely a possibility for this team. When Dexter hits the shot, another lead for Tulsa. Janeka back in the game, as are most of the starters for the Bulls. Arno just committed the foul on the other end. There's that close presence. Benjiadu doesn't get the roll. Golden Hurricane off to the races in rhythm three, off the mark. Brito. Dish off to Wilson, doesn't take too many shots, and that one doesn't go. And Giadu, though, again, doing what she does best and crashing the boards. Janeka, that one tapped out. Frito, runner off. And then Giadu there to clean it up. Yeah, it's a luxury to have a player that can clean it up like an NBA, obviously. We're not knocking down those shots. She's able to clean it up from there and get you that second chance opportunity. So we're tied again. 29 to 29. Nearly out. A little out of control here for Tulsa. Mayberry got blocked by Brito. Off her knee and out will be South Florida ball. Point Dexter and company taking care of business here at home.
three from the field and then two for two from three. Complete performance. 15 minutes played and 12 points. Again, she's averaging 11 per game, so she's already surpassed that. We're not even uh, through the, the first half. This has been back and forth all night. Tulsa came storming back. Janaka, 0 for 2 on that one. 0 for 3 are the Bulls. Then Giadu usually will hit that. Yeah, you could even hear in her voice, she hit a O, but, you know, lots of missed buckets there by Florida, and you gotta capitalize. When you get those boards, you gotta put them in. Crawford, high post. Point Dexter, eight points today. Nice compliment, backdoor cut. A little out of control, she was wobbly and went out. Yeah, how much this game, when you talk about a game being on the line, how much do you want it? I mean, you see Poindexter, just a hard take there. You know, she falls out on the ground, but she's just such an aggressive player. I love watching her play. And, you know, what I was even more impressed, I saw her, she was starting that offense. You talk about her versatility, being able to play at that point spot, being able to play positions one through five. Very impressive game. And Giadu. Hits the shot, headed to the free throw line, the hoop and the harm. Yeah, absolutely no answer here. I love this patience. Took it all the way from the high post. Let's get another look at it. She's backing him down, saying, hey, get your weight up. Uh, and one. I love the aggressive play there by Menjiadu, just holding it down for the Bulls right now. Short on the free throw attempt. Usually a 75% free throw shooter is Menjiadu. No good that time around. So back to a slight two point lead. There's a costly turnover by Biddle. Basis actually holds. And then the Bulls will set up their offense. Brito underneath. That was a little fake out there. Ended up going faster than I thought. <laughs> yeah, great bucket there by Brito. Brito gets the board. And Giadu traveled. Yeah, you gotta credit Giadu just running the floor there. Just such a great game. She averages 16 points per game and she's already at 14 here tonight. Almost about half the team's points right now. Such an impressive play. Seven rebounds as well. When Dexter Brito reached over, two free throws on the way. Like I said before, how much do you want it? Same play here. Look, she just attacks it. She's not shy of any play on the body, any contact there. She's going to keep driving it, taking it to the basket, being aggressive. Why? Because you can get rewarded by three shots at the charity strike. It's the first one. Well, the 10th and final SEC Big 12 challenge is Saturday with five of the games on ESPN, ESPN and the app. Auburn and West Virginia tip the day off in Morgantown at noon Eastern, followed by Alabama, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Baylor, and Texas and Tennessee at 6 Eastern and 5 Central with Kansas and Kentucky capping the night at Ruff Arena. How about that bucket there by Puisis? That's exactly what she wants to see as well as the move. That's her shot right there. That's her money, that three-point shot. It's one for four from three-point land. As USF is on a nine-to-two run right now, as you saw that turnover from the sophomore Crawford. Yeah, when you don't want to run like that, Coach, you know, Tulsa, they might need to call a timeout, get their team together. It's not called right now, but you might believe that that next bucket might be so. Caitlin Levings commits a foul against Men Giadu. As we see there, back to the basket. Nice footwork. Levings is going to take a seat. That's her second foul. 
And that's huge. Levings is what gives Tulsa that size, right? She's been battling against Mengiotti, so we'll see how that looks in this last minute. That's another miss for the senior on the Bulls. She's 0 for 3 from the free throw line in general. 1 for 4 are the Bulls today from the charity strike. Not the best mark, and it was time to fight your way into a tight game. You need to hit your free throws. Block on that chance for Biddle. That's just an excellent block there for Chineke. You, know, you talk about the dynamic of her game and on both ends of the floor, but it is to get that block there. That's a big girl block. Four and a half minutes since the last field goal for Tulsa. Yet they're still in this game. Quesis in between the ring. Shot clock is almost over. Here's a final heave, and it's good. Wow. That's a Florida Consensio. shots under pressure like that. Point Dexter. Harriman is headed to the free throw line. Let's see. Well, we've seen Biddle attack all game, but how about Janessa with the block? She says, give me that. And then on the other end, way to capitalize. Shot clock winds down, and that buzzer beater goes down there. What a great shot by Asensio. Just a freshman. Getting some big minutes played with uh, Carla Brito, the U18 FIBA European Games this summer. So got a lot of experience. Sentio will take it up. And we talked about it. are going to hold for the last shot. We talked about it earlier, how those players playing FIBA are almost like pro players. The Jenica. Wow. This is their Quesis. bread and butter capitalizing off those plays. Great play there by Quesis. Tulsa not able to get it though. That's going to extend the lead to 10. So South Florida goes on a run at the end of the second. Coach said you got to communicate. Nelf was a smart coach. She knows what she's talking about. Communication is such an important part on the defensive end, especially you're guarding the top three of the top four scores in the country, all with different, you know, elements to their game. So you got to communicate. You got to know where they are. You have players running, help side scrambling, all communication there. And that's what's going to elevate Tulsa. They want to win this game. Crawford goes for the triple short on that. Rita wants to go. Spin move in the lane. Hits the shot. Headed to the free throw line. Such a great take there in the living room. <laughs> Got that right there from my producer. But how about that spin to that bucket? I mean, so, uh, excuse me, USF is such a great transition team. That's their money. It's textbook for them. So, you know, for Tulsa, that's where that communication comes in. And Tulsa's not a strong transition defensive team, so they got to communicate there. But Brito with the take, I love it. Tulsa looking for the triple as Brito has got eight points tonight. And she usually hovers around nine points per game. She had 13, though, against UCF in that lopsided victory last week for the Bulls. Took care of business against their rival. Ended up winning that game 83 to 51. And we're start starting to see the Bulls, you know, heat up a little bit as Menjiadu with that block. Yeah, battle of the bigs here. And Menjiadu, she just has that block. She says, uh uh. She said, this is my paint. I'm the only one that's going to own it inside the paint tonight. That was against Levings. Mayberry has to launch a prayer. It doesn't touch rim. And so that one will get called back and will reset here. As you saw, Brito was already down on the other end. Tulsa still struggling a little bit as we start the third quarter. They're outscored 18 to 11 in that second quarter. We've seen the one bucket in the third. Just waiting for a shoe to get tied and we're good to go. Wilson off the handoff. Quesis bobbled and out. Listen, Mara, classic 
tying of the shoe. I would thank that player, whoever it was, they weren't on camera, but that's how you get your little two to three to five second break there. It's a lot of pressure though sometimes when the camera's on you and you know we gotta hurry up. Hands are shaking a little bit. Oh no more. That wasn't me. I was that player that took my time the time. <laughs> there was no pressure for me. I wanted my own to catch my breath. I took my sweet time. Off the rebound, another chance here for USF. Quisa is just not really getting it going tonight. She's just two for six from three point land. Here she is again. Short. And just getting harassed underneath is Menjiadu. Yeah, Menjiadu, she had a player boxing around, then a player behind her. Almost like a over the back, but obviously not over the back here. But that's just great aggressive play there by Tulsa. You got to corral the best of, uh, the best rebounder in this game, and that is Menjiadu. Brito. Chineka to the rack. Easy score. But Chineka, that's a player that I really want to see step up, especially with offensive production, you know, in this second half. She's been a little quiet by her standards today. She's got nine points. Four for nine from the field. Yeah, no, I believe Dexter's the biggest thing baseline cut to Crawford, who scores. Yeah, the biggest thing for Florida, you know, is their big three to have buckets here this game. And there we go. One of the big three, that's Sammy Puisis there with the three. That's her third triple today, Puisis. As you this is the, the schedule in the American Conference at the moment. Just getting underway in most games. This one is pretty early uh, for Central Time, 5 Eastern Time. Uh, Memphis, East Carolina. And these are the top two teams, though, Asia, in the American Conference right now. They have the best records. One loss for Tulsa in conference play, none for South Florida. Absolutely, the prime time matchup here. Both teams coming in with a chip on their shoulder. You know, Florida wanting to hold it down, remain the dominant team, while Tulsa, they want to take out that number one slot. Gallegos almost gets the rebound. Now she's going head to head with Brito. An intensity here in conference play picking up. Wilson off the dish. Chinaka gets fouled, heading to the hoop. Such a gritty, tough game here. We saw that steal on one end, and then Chinaka just taking it so aggressive to the rim. This is just a physical, aggressive game, and you know, that's, you talk about both squads really wanting to win. You see that will to win in every possession. Foul against Crawford. That's her first one as Chineka rattles that one home. Again, we got to talk about this game. It's a big one. Tomorrow, Thursday on ESPN. Mark your calendars. College game day tips off our coverage from Thompson Bowling Arena at 7 Eastern. So that's fantastic. And then the rivalry is renewed. UConn, Tennessee. Stage was set in the 90s. Pat Summit, Geno. And we're going to see two fantastic teams go head to head. That's at 8 o'clock from Knoxville. Yeah, rivalry, like you said, Mara, since the 90s, this is, you know, we, you know, we talked about it before. This is a, one of those rivalries that really brought so much attention to the women's game. You know, that between UConn, Tennessee. Yeah, you have some of the great players from UConn. You have Diana Taurasi, even one of our own, Rebecca Lobo was a part of that UConn squad back in the day. Sue Bird on the other end with Tennessee, Candace Parker, Tamika catch so many players. You know, when you talk about just the dynasty that both programs have created. Very exciting matchup. You know, they've influenced, had such an influence, you know, on my game. And even in my time coming up, every player, you know, they wanted to go to the UConn or Tennessee. They, you know, I always dreamed of being the next Candace Parker in the league. I mean, I wasn't up to par with her, but, you know, you just talk about the influence that both teams have in college basketball. I dreamed of being the next Candace Parker too, and then I grew to be five foot three, and and that was off the table. 
But yes, it is a fantastic rivalry as Gonzalez gets fouled as a chance for a three-point play and things are rolling for the Bulls. Yeah, a couple looks here. The post up and how about it? You know, we've seen Menji Adu and her scoring ability, but to be able to pass and then you see here another assist here and the aggressive take there by Gonzalez, who's really stepped up. Well, that's a third assist for Menji Adu. She's just racking up the stats today. Of course, uh, 14 points, 11 rebounds, another double-double, make that 49 in her career. As Gonzalez off the back iron on the free throw. Uh, I do think Menji Adu is the, the type of player that Pat Summit would have been obsessed with. She loved players that she loved her post, loved rebounders, loved players that played hard. And, you know, she was one of those post coaches, which is like, you know, one of the best coaches to have. You got to respect your post players there. And Menji Adu, that's another part of her game that I love so much. A lot of teams are going to key in on her. She's going to get doubled. They're going to swarm her. So to have that ability and IQ and unselfishness to drop some of those dimes, it's big time. Again, we back Pat initiative trying to end Alzheimer's. For more information, go to patsummit.org. And Giannu down low, scores. Head of the charity stripe. She's on fire. Listen, on fire. Absolutely no answer. You got to get a body on her. This is the number one rebounder in conference. And she's going to get herself a little bucket here. Another look at it. She just goes over the top of three Tulsa players like it's nothing. It hits the free throw, throw, which has been a problem today, actually, for uh, USF. They're four for nine from the charity stripe. With that 17 points for the redshirt senior again, 6'4 out of Cameroon. It's quite the journey to get to USF again, spent some time at Memphis, which is a conference rival, and then came over and things really started to take off. And, and now she's expected to be first team all American conference. And she was great at Memphis too. She got the second team honors in that 2020 to 21 season. Um, coming over here, she got the same second All-American Conference honors. And, you know, now this year, like you said. Janeka off the handoff. Senior crossing up in the lane. Reverse layup is good. Yeah, Tulsa, they look to ice that screen there, but Taneka just splits right through it and takes it right into the paint. Just such a crafty player. Taneka is so kind of herky-jerky in her movements, and then she'll blow by you. It's really tough to guard. A very shifty player out there. Yeah, she's so quick. It's a 20-point lead as we reach the media timeout here in the third quarter. The Bulls are feeling themselves. Catologist Charlie Cream has them as a six seed. They could maybe exceed that if they keep putting up the numbers that they're putting up. And Jose Fernandez, you know, he's been to so many NCAA tournaments in the last 10 seasons. He's been to so many postseasons, you know, constantly in either the NCAA tournament or the WNIT. But at this point, they want to take the next step. They want to win some games in March. Absolutely. And you got to credit this Florida team. They had a very tough non-conference schedule where four of those losses, where all of those losses that they have have been against ranked opponents. And, you know, you talk about that Ohio State game that they lost in overtime. Ohio State's ranked right now at number two. And they only lost to them by two. So this is a very capable Florida, te Florida team here. Yeah, you see the numbers, like you said, took Ohio State to overtime, which is, Ohio State is the number two team in the country right now, and they're probably going to be a one seed come March. And then you look at the losses, they're all good losses, so you really can't build a much better resume than what the Bulls have right now as Gonzalez lets it fly. Off the mark on that one, fighting for the rebound, and Biddle wants to go. 14 points, just two in the second half for Biddle. They very pure. And Nelp got him juiced up, you know, in that last time out. It's a great bucket there by Tulsa. The Tulsa three for three in their last field goals, so starting to get back on track. 
this third quarter, USF has dominated 16 to 11 in terms of points. Janeka 0 for 2. Not that a foul underneath. Three chances there for USF. And Giadu will head to the free throw line as you see this look from Mayberry. Yeah, this is how you're coming off a timeout. You got to come in hot. And who more hotter than Mayberry? I called her Money Mayberry, and that is why she is a sharp shooter. You got to know where she is out on the floor. And, you know, if I'm Mayberry, I'm taking every shot. Every time I get in, I'm open from beyond the arc. I'm taking it. But then also on the other end, there's just absolutely, we talked about this all game, Mar. No answer at all from Mengiadu, who knocks down another free throw. Oh, the first ever NBA, or excuse me, NBA Rivals Week is capped off by a triple header Saturday on ABC and the ESPN app. Nuggets Sixers at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, followed by Knicks and Nets with the Lakers and the Celtics rounding out the day. It all starts with NBA Countdown at 2.30 Eastern and 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. And the Celtics, how about them? They've been great. It's one of my favorite teams. I know my producer likes the Knicks or the Nets. I'm not sure. Uh oh, so he just spoke to me right here. He said he's a he's a Nets fan, but I'm a Celtics fan. <laughs> I love the me Celtics. Well. You know, I love those I love those defensive teams, and they've had some good offense to their game too. Yeah, I grew up on uh, Paul Pierce and uh, some tough times, but now the Celtics are back on track. Mara, fun fact, my dad played for the Celtics. Another reason why I love that team. I actually have a Celtics ball right here on my wall with some autographs oh, on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Big Celtics fan over here. My, did, my dad did not play for the Celtics, but he certainly dreamed it. <laughs> Had enough uh, autographs <laughs> to make you think maybe he did play for them. But no, that was a dream to share in household. As there's a rejection, and here comes Tulsa Mayberry. Off the stop. Point Jackster for three. No, trying to get the rebound. And stonewalled there by Isis. But Tulsa looks re-energized here in the end of the third quarter. Isis, four for 11 from the field today. She's got 11 points. Hasn't been her most efficient. Still reaching double digits. And Giadu miss on that one. And we'll get a foul underneath, some pushing and shoving. Listen, I love this block here. Mayberry just comes in for the help after Dexter was getting sealed. That's just great help side. And how about an, her dad played in the NBA as well. Lee Mayberry got drafted in the 23rd overall pick in 1992 to the Milwaukee Bucks, also played with the Grizzlies. So this is a lineage, you know, to have a father that played in the NBA, obviously, look at her game. Lots of talent there. I know he's in her ear. I know exactly what it's like, but, you know, such a tremendous genes to be passed on when you talk about from dad to daughter. And the Mayberries have quite the lineage as well. Two sisters that played here. Um, Talia Mayberry, she's now at Kansas, the starting point guard there. Her sister, Wynette Mayberry, she played here at Tulsa. She played in 2020, or excuse me, she played in 2009. That's Talia Mayberry, the oldest sister, 2009 to 2012. She was a great player here at Tulsa. Wynette is the sister yeah. that's at Kansas, excuse me. Yeah, basketball clearly runs in the Mary Mayberry family's blood. And of course, her father also played at Arkansas, a team that went to the Final Four, so he had a very successful college basketball career. Ended up running into Christian Leitner in Duke, but, you know, he can give her some advice and feedback, as he does after most games in the crowd or watching, if he can. Very proud father. You had to bring up Christian Leitner. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Point Dexter underneath. Levings can't finish. Sixteen point lead for South Florida on the road. Remember, Tulsa has not lost a game here at the Reynolds Center this year. This would be the first one if the score stands. 
Bill, Mayberry, Swish. Yeah, that's such a tough bucket there. And that's, you know, that's what they want to do. That transition look right there. You're driving. All the players were stuck into the paint on the strong side. Mayberry was open there on the weak side for that easy three. Well, a 13 point lead for South Florida. It's shrinking a little bit. We'll be. Well, the 10th and final SEC Big 12 Challenge is Saturday with five of the games on ESPN and the app, Auburn and West Virginia, tip the day off in Morgantown at noon Eastern time, followed by Alabama, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, Baylor, and Texas and Tennessee at 6 Eastern and 5 Central with Kansas and Kentucky capping the night off at Ruff Arena. So it's going to be a big weekend in college basketball as per usual. Just a minute left in the third quarter when Dexter gets fouled, head into the rack. And that's exactly what Cole's going to have to do if they want to keep chipping away, is get to the free throw line. And Point Dexter, she's been doing that all game, just super aggressive to the basket. She wants this. You can see it in her eyes. She really wants this game, and that's, you know, it shows in her aggressive attack. Point Dexter has 16 points today. He's four for four from the free throw line. Foul against Menjiadu, who now has four personal fouls. Well, she's gonna take a seat. One for two on the trip to the charity stripe as Quisis misses, and then we've got some physical play. Crawford goes down, Brito goes down, and the Bulls will get the ball. It's yeah, a very physical play game. Again. Absolutely physical game. It's been like that all day. Sammy Police is here, you know, with the shot in. Very physical there on the rebounder. Yeah, the little domino effect right there. And, you know, you talk about physical. That's huge with Menjiadu on the bench, with Menjiadu on the bench, you know, with four fouls. Well, the woes from the free throw line continue. Seven for 14 is USF as that one goes for Brito, of course, uh, in the bonus now. So they'll be shooting for the remainder of the third quarter. Perriman comes in when Dexter comes out. Hey, yeah, you got to make those free throws. You know, when it comes, you get into tournament time, those are what the games come down to free throws so you know shooting below that in those 50 percent 53 percent below is it's, it's not going to cut it got to improve on the free throw cam matthews in for tulsa we'll get a whistle two shots on the way for the golden hurricane florida also in the bonus here as brito takes a seat on the bench Matthews, just a freshman, it's her first points of the, the day. In Keller, Texas. Slight difference between the shot clock and the game clock here to end the third quarter. Another reverse layup. Janeka makes it look easy, but you know it's a tough shot. shot of the third for Tulsa Crawford lets the triple go doesn't get the shooters touch Gonzalez gets the rebound and that will do it we've played three quarters here in Tulsa and the visitors are in control they're shooting well they're playing well absolutely the biggest thing yeah the biggest thing that stood out to me in that huddle she said Look at the score. We're not that far off. All it is is a stop and a score. Stop and a score. So you have to, you know, she talked about defending those ball screens. You have to get a stop on the defensive end, but then capitalize score on the offensive end. Make free throws. Well, you saw the foul trouble. Apologize, I said uh, Brito is actually the one that has four fouls. And 
Benjiadu has three for South Florida, which is still potentially an issue, but she's back out there. I was wondering if she could even play the fourth quarter, the bulk of it, but she's back out there. This is a team, though, South Florida, that fouls a lot. They're actually first in the conference in that category. Well, they play very aggressive defense, so you got to believe that comes with the territory. More. You know, when, you, when you're aggressive, you corral the ball, get down those passing lanes, you know, go hard to the board. That's what's going to happen. You may pick up a foul there, so you just have to know that balance. That's Gonzalez who commits the foul there. It's point Dexter uh, at the free throw line. Sticks it. A second foul on Gonzalez. Leads 15 for South Florida trying to hang on. Remain undefeated in the American Conference. The top of the standings. And Giadu open on the baseline. Too open. You know, too open. You know, we've seen that all game from her. You know, for South Florida, this is this is a statement game, right? I mean, they want to prove, hey, no one can beat us, not even a number two team in conference. We dominate this conference. That's why we stand at the top. So winning this game means a lot to both squads when you talk about Florida. Extremely efficient game for Mengiadu, by the way. Nine for 15 from the field. She's three for six from the free throw line, which has been the only iffy part of her game today, but she's got 15 rebounds, 15. Three assists, too. Gonzalez goes to work, spin move, off the glass and in. Yeah, it's just been so easy. Florida's been able to get their looks in the paint, and that's where Tulsa struggles mostly on the defensive end, is really guarding, you know, anything going inside the paint. I mean, look at those numbers. 46 points in the paint compared to 12 for Tulsa, and that is by far the difference. Yeah, a couple looks in those last buckets here. Just that easy. The seal up. Best move is no move. Easy bucket there for Menjiadu. And then how about Gonzalez just going aggressive, big body to the basket? Well, you see someone like Gonzalez who has nine points today, gaining some confidence, just a freshman. I mean, she's the future of this team. And to just have players like her now, she's got 11, getting their moments while also getting that leadership with all of the veteran experience that South Florida has. That's gotta be great for Fernandez, you know, now and then moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about this last bucket here. It's just that easy, I love it. That pass fake there, using her body well, that move, the counter, that's another part of her game that she's elevated is that counter move, that second point of attack. That's why she's getting those buckets. Mangiadu, 23 points, now 10 for 16 from the field. Gonzalez has got nine. And Tulsa just continues to struggle. And can we shout out Mangiadu for guarding out there on the perimeter and getting that stop? Travel against Wilson. But sometimes you just need your best players to kind of take over. Remember after the first quarter, it was 23 to 20. South Florida just barely hanging on. In the second quarter, we saw Tulsa tie it up and take the lead. And then since then, South Florida, you know, got some timeouts, got a chance to talk things over. And Fernandez has clearly uh, told this team to keep their foot on the gas. Chineka. Wyatt, 17 points, but the second half has been really solid. Underneath, Gonzalez, the hoop and the harm. 11 points now. We've seen a lot of good block to block passing here and passing from the big down low. Absolutely. You see the double team. Coming right at there at Manji Adum. What does she do? She doesn't panic. She stays poised and makes a great pass to Gonzalez on the cut there. And Gonzalez, credit her, she gets that big bucket able to finish. And adds Matthews another left. one from the free throw line. Yeah, Matthews left hanging. Tough spot for the freshman. Gets her first foul. 
as Gonzalez completes the three-point play. And now she's got 12, five for six from the field. So again, very efficient backdoor cut point Dexter can't handle. And Matthews will reset for Tulsa. Takes the triple, rattles home. A yeah, great bucket there for Tulsa. That's what you need. That's what they're going to need. They're going to need threes, but then it also starts on the defensive end. You got to get stops, stops and score, stop and score. That's how you chip away. And they have six minutes, or excuse me, a little under seven minutes to do so. So plenty of time here. Well, again, too easy for the Bulls. 20 point lead. And Matthews has been good off the bench. For Tulsa, she's got eight points in six minutes. There she's again, lofting it in to point Dexter. Who loses it? Janeka picks her pocket and will get a foul against Mayberry. Mayberry's going to take a seat. So is Matthews. That's her second foul. Get some love from her head coach, Angie Nelp. Alvarez back in. Quisis takes a seat. Wilson. Two defenders on her, offensive foul. Yeah, I believe they called her there. She did have high elbows. Let's get a look at it here. Yeah, went up and under. Not sure. It didn't look like she did it purposely, obviously. But, you know, when you get those high elbows and you hit the defender above the neck, that will be called as offensive foul. Crawford scores and gets fouled. Wilson commits. By the way, with that offensive foul, now Mangiadu does have four. An aggressive take there by Crawford. Able to get the and one. Uh, Wilson now has four fouls as well. And Brito does on the bench. So a little bit of foul trouble for the Bulls. They have a large enough lead. Feel semi comfortable with that as Crawford sinks the free throw. But Delaney Crawford, hailed by her head coach, is a, a bit of an unsung hero. Again, just a sophomore, nine points, five rebounds today. I feel like her game's going to just grow and grow in such a competitive conference. Too strong for Chineka on the lay in. Point Dexter. Start, stops, footwork. Oh, everything but the finish. Yeah, that would have been an extremely tough bucket. Not able to finish. Wilson just holds, looking over to Fernandez. And not a large rush or a anything for USF right now. Janeka driving baseline, Alvarez. Yeah, as you said, Mark, it's a comfortable, yeah, comfortable lead there. So they're going to take their time, set up a play, pass the ball around, and get the best and easiest shot. And that's exactly what they did right there in the paint, which has been money for them all game long. Now you said it. Money in the paint. This is a team that shoots really well from the field. They've been doing that today. 52% from the field. And then, of course, it's just led by Mejiadu, who has 25 points. What a great pass. Cut pass and play. Coach Fernandez said that he was going to run a clinic, and that's absolutely you know, You said it before. Tulsa threw a pizza party, and guess what? Florida, they're throwing a paint party with the number of points that they are getting in the paint. 56 paint points, and we talked about it all game long. A lot of it coming from Mangiato, who's been dominating. Got to shout out Gonzalez, too. She's been getting in there as well. And 17 second chance points as well as Tulsa's bench erupts. You know, some different players getting in the game here. Caroline Lyles with her first bucket out of that timeout. 
Yeah, tough take right here. You know, you're coming off the bench. You know, that's how you do it. That's how you prove the coach, hey, you can put me in the game. Trust me with minutes. That's how you build minutes. You come in and make plays like that. Well, we talk about Tulsa. And look, they have Mayberry and they have Middle, but overall, this team's very young. Lots of sophomores, lots of freshmen. And so you feel like the future is bright. And you, you have someone like Queen Dexter, who's your leading scorer right now. She's such a, a threat in this conference, and she's just a sophomore in her second season. And you can only grow. You can only go up from here. This is a hardworking team. I talked about before they get in the film room. They watch a lot of film. So a lot of upside for Tulsa. And that's the perks of having such a, you know, a young squad that has so much potential. That ceiling is just so high. And when you talk about Nelp and what she's done, it's been fantastic. Last year, 17 wins. That's the most wins in eight years. Well, now they have 15 wins. They're two wins away from exceeding that or tying that and then three from exceeding that this year already and so that steady increase in a conference as competitive as this one when you have teams like USF are going up against every night that's got to be a great feeling for this program and I think you know the biggest takeaway you know for this game for Tulsa you always learn from each game right and this is a battle a tough battle they put up against the number you know one team the conference and Listen, Florida, we talked about it before. The way they've been playing, they are, you know, coaches pulled number 25, you know, number six seed by Charlie Cream. This is a strong Florida team. So for a young team like Tulsa, you know, you don't want to take a loss, but you got to, you know, you take it as a learning tool, but you got to be excited as well when you talk about the potential and the growth that this team has. And hey, you may well get the, you're going to see him again. So there's another opportunity there. And the, and the next game for Tulsa really big against SMU. Pretty good SMU team, but it's also a chance to kind of snap what appears to be a, a two-game slide for the Golden Hurricane. And Chloe Williams in the game. Harriman for Tulsa in the lane. The drive here, in and out. The Diego's with the look. Some free throws coming, but here's a look at the upcoming schedule for Tulsa. And look, again, this conference is really competitive. Tulane, SMU, Cincinnati, Wichita State. These are all programs that have a good history in college basketball, but you get the feeling Tulsa should have the advantage against pretty much all of those teams. Yeah, and I know, you know, they're looking at that February 12th game. You know, you take it game by game, but when you talk about looking ahead, that February 12th game against Tulane, they gave them their first loss. So that's an exciting matchup you want to talk about when you go, you know, going into that second matchup there against Tulane. But again, you take it game by game. Try to rack up as many wins as you can. Asensio making it rain. South Florida benches into it. Matthews. Gallegos scores, got fouled, chance for a three-point play. You got to love the aggression here by Gallegos. And on both ends, you got to love the aggressiveness by the bench players. And I know the starters who are on the bench right now are so hyped. That's why they're so hyped and so excited to see those players that don't normally get those minutes come in the game and not let off. They're producing on both ends of the floor. Completes a, the three-point play as Alvarez had committed the foul. Here she is, a chance for three. Swish. 20-point lead again for the Bulls. Matthews off to the races. Triple attempt, rattles home. Harriman, I mean, look at this. All of a sudden. The players off the bench, yeah, they want to have a shootout. They said they're going to give us a shootout for this last two minutes of the game. This is kind of the high scoring affair that we assumed would happen today, but 86 points so far for South Florida. That is a pretty staggering number against a conference foe. Rito, fancy footwork. Just can't get it to fall. Harriman. Gallegos. Drives. Off the rim. Palms 
here for the Bulls. Minute 20 left in the fourth quarter. Sensio all around the world, too strong. Matthews, why not? We are really running. <laughs> yeah. Alvarez. Nothing, absolutely nothing let off, you know, when the starters come out and then the bench comes in. It's a fast-paced game. I'm sure they have, you know, all the energy, but this is how Florida plays and this is how Tulsa plays, that fast up and down, and we're seeing it. Yeah, I mean, these players off the bench are, are showing what they, you know, are learning in practice, and again, this is great. There's a ton of young players in the game, lots of freshmen in for both sides. And in a couple of years, we're probably going to see, you know, a starting five similar to what's on the court right now for both these teams. Matthews, again, can't get the shooter's touch, but Perriman skies in for the board. And Matthews, eight points today, turned over. And absolutely, and when you talk about those... When you talk about those freshmen, it's these moments right here, that experience that you get, you know, how you utilize that time out on the floor. It'll be exciting to see how they are when they become upperclassmen. Oh, the final score is 89 to 68. South Florida comes into town and they ruin that unbeaten streak here at the Reynolds Center.